Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back to this fascinating series about uh, Islamic Sharia law. Last time we talked about the importance of the Islamic scholars and the concept of ijma or consensus. Today we are going to probably give you an application of such a thing related to, let's call it the, um, you know, the penalty for insulting Muhammad. Let's call it even blasphemy against the prophet of Islam. With me here to unpack that, uh, our dear brother Lloyd DeYoung. Lloyd, welcome back. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here, Al-Fadi. So, Lloyd, you know, we hear, especially uh, coming out of Pakistan, many times uh, that people are put to jail, uh, put in jail, or even are sentenced to death because of the blasphemy of the Prophet. Recently in Nigeria, uh, a young, basically, uh, high school uh, lady, young, young girl, was stoned to death uh, f with this accusation that she blasphemed the Prophet. Which is like, I mean, theologically speaking, it's almost like you're saying the Prophet is equal to Allah. But anyway, let's put that aside. Where do these rulings come from? Right, let me show you that. We just spoke about the Ijma. So let's have a look at the Ijma, the consensus of all the scholars. Now, just for the audience, you can see here on my screen that I'm sharing. This law, I just made a note here in Notepad, is technically it's called Sab al Rasul. Okay? Yeah, Sab al Rasul, so, meaning the insult of uh, the Prophet. Yeah. Sab al Rasul, right. So this book that I have here, I will provide the link, so please download it later from the description or a pinned comment, or look for my comment later. The summary of the unsheathed sword against the one who insults the messenger. Notice it doesn't say the one who insults Allah. It says That's the right. one who insults Muhammad. This is by Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. Very briefly, there are five major scholars in Islam. They are the four founders of the schools of fiqh, the mujtahids mutlaq, the absolute scholars, the scholars who cannot be wrong. Above them is a single scholar, uh, we won't deal with him right now. And then there are about 28, 29 scholars. Let's just call it around number 30 scholars, who are the Sheikh al-Islam. These are the most influential scholars in Islam after the top five. And he was one of the most important. He is the major scholar in the doctrine of jihad in Islam. This is his book, which is a, an ijma. So it, it contains the ijma, the consensus of all of the, all of the major mujtahids, the four mujtahids mutlaq, the infallible scholars. And it discusses the penalty for insulting Muhammad. Let's have a look through this major work. This is the definitive work on the subject. It says here, whoever insults the prophet is to be killed, whether they are Muslim or a disbeliever. So understand, Sharia law applies to you. Are you a Jew? Are you Hindu, Buddhist, Christian? Sharia law applies equally to you as a disbeliever. Killing is prescribed on him in, the chapter, in chapter 2. The one who insults the prophet. And it is not permissible to imprison or show favor to him or to ransom him. Chapter 3 discusses any Muslim or non-Muslim who insults the prophet is to be killed and repentance is not sought. I, I hope this is fairly clear. I, I think this makes it very clear. Who insults the prophet is to be killed with a Muslim or non-Muslim. Let's continue to the second page here. This book concerns the Islamic ruling upon those who insult the final prophet and messenger, Muhammad. He has an unparalleled status amongst the prophets, right? And of course, they say that people want to distort and fabricate things about him because they are enemies of Islam. And this is the punishment for those who say these things. Now, I want to mention here, the objective of this work was to clarify the Islamic ruling on the subject. The first issue, the one who insults Muhammad, whether Muslim or disbeliever, is to be killed. They are killed, even if they pay a protective tax in a Muslim state. This is not a protective tax, it is not a tax. We'll discuss that later. But So, clarification of what constitutes insulting. Let's go have a look here. Whoever insults Muhammad is to be killed. This is the general view of the scholars. The scholars have consensus that whoever insults Muhammad is killed. This is Malik, Laith, Ahmad, Ishaq, Ashafi also said this. All the founders of the schools of fiqh agree. The Muslims have unanimous agreement upon killing whoever insults Muhammad. It is the ruling that whoever insults other than Muhammad, maybe Allah, for instance, is to be lashed. So you have a more severe punishment for insulting Muhammad than Allah. That's this right. consensus is, is taken to be the consensus from the Tabi'un and the companions of Allah's messenger. Do you have a comment you want to add, Al-Fadi, before I continue? No, I mean, it's just fascinating to me to talk about these issues because uh, it shows the status of Muhammad. 
And it shows how important he is, really, even more important than Allah. I mean, you would expect blasphemy to be against God, deity, right? And you would expect a severe punish, uh, punishment if you indeed insulting the Creator. But that's not the case here. Well, I will show a little... Once I finish this, I will show the status of Muhammad within Islam, within the Sharia itself. I'll go back to the Sharia manual and you will see that. So... Let's see, consensus upon the obligation of killing such a person. So notice there is consensus upon the obligation to kill such a person. And the Muslims have a consensus that whoever insults Allah or insults his messenger or in rejects anything. Now, we as non-Muslims, we reject Islam. So those who reject anything from what has been revealed by Allah, such a person is a disbeliever. And let's have a look. I do not know anyone who differed concerning the obligation of killing such a person. Do you reject Allah? Are you an atheist? Well, Islam is obliged to kill you for this evil act of rejecting Muhammad. Notice, the scholars have consensus, the ijma, the scholars have consensus that whoever insults the messenger that attribute a defect to Muhammad, such a person is a disbeliever. And remember, they have an obligation of killing such a person. The Muslim who insults is killed. There is no disagreement concerning that. This is the view of the four imams and other than them. So the four imams, the infallible, perfect imams, the absolute imams with absolute knowledge of Islamic law, of Allah's law, they have stated this. So Muhammad is perfect. Muhammad is the perfect man, the insan al-kamil. I will type this here just so you can see this. Muhammad is titled the insan al-kamil, right? So Muhammad is the perfect man or the perfected man. Let's continue. I will do a couple more pages here. The Muslim and the disbeliever are to be killed. In several hadith, the hadith of the blind man who killed a woman when he heard her insulting the prophet. So That's this right. tells us that this hadith is authoritative. What is included in the Sharia rulings are authoritative and not abrogated. There is no difference of opinion narrated from him concerning the killing. This is Shafi. This man is instrumental. Shafi is instrumental in constructing of the modern Sharia, right? I will do one more page just so you can see all of the mention that the one who insults the messenger is to be killed. We are now on this book. We're on page 16, and there are, there are dozens more pages, but I think you get the point. I believe this is clear, Al-Fadi. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, there is no disputing about this. And I, I like the uh, the fact that they use the story of that uh, woman, Asma bint, uh, bint Marwan, uh, who indeed a blind man uh, basically heard the prophet basically complaining about the fact that she's been conducting poems, uh, insulting him. And he says, you know, who would go and, and basically uh, avenge for me? He went at nighttime and he killed her. He stuck his basically sword in her while she's also allegedly carrying a baby, basically was nursing him uh, and while she was asleep. And then he came to the prophet and announced what happened. And the prophet says, not even two goats are going to butt heads against her, meaning she is nothing, uh, technically speaking. No one will even care about the fact that she was killed. In other words, good for you. You killed an insignificant person. So we wonder sometimes why do our Muslim friends um, try to defend the fact that the prophet is not a murderer? He's the one who ordered things like this, incited things like this. And at the same time, I ask my Muslim friends, why is it a blasphemy to say anything against the prophet, a human being, by your own admission, just like us? In fact, you denigrated our Lord Jesus Christ and lowered him down to be in the status of a human being. Yet you guys insult him all the time. All the time you insult him, yet our Lord never ordered us to go and just kill people. He orders to love even our enemies. In other words, he loves his enemies as our example, and he wants us to love our enemies. That's the one we follow, not the one that gets upset because someone said something negative about him, and the only solution is don't accept even retribution from them, don't accept even the attempt for forgiveness, but yet go and kill them. It's almost like that's the only solution to the problem. So thank you, brother, for... I would like uh, to do. Yeah. yeah, please, oh, sorry, go may, ahead. May I go on? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Oh, no. Thanks, Al-Fadi. I want to specify the position of Muhammad within Sharia. So I'll show this from my slides again, if I may, to qualify. Notice the Sharia. This is section P75.2 in the Reliance. Not loving the Prophet more than all people. Now notice they use euphemisms. 
The Prophet said, none of you believes, no one is a Muslim, until I, Muhammad, am more beloved to him than his wife, child, self, and all people. When they say self here, they mean my life, your life. In other words, you must be willing to die for him. So notice, love of the Prophet means the will to obey him and not disobey him. This being one of the obligations of Islam. Now, none of you believes until his inclinations conform to what Muhammad has brought. Now, I want to go back here for one moment. None of you believes until I am more beloved to him than his wife, child, life, and all people. In other words, no one comes to the Father except through me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Understand, this is Muhammad is the way to Allah. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your mind and all your strength. Well, you must love the Lord your Muhammad more than your life, your possessions, your wife, your children. Understand what they're doing here. They're taking this straight from the Gospel of James, exactly. and they're applying this to Muhammad. So notice, when Allah and his messenger have, made this, have decided a matter, no believer, male or female, has a choice in their affair. And now I want to do one last thing. This is the guidance to the uncertain in reply to the Jews and the Nazarenes. This is the student of Ibn Taymiyyah who wrote the rules of Sabah Razul, right? And I'm going to show you what Muslim polemic. This is, an, this is a very old polemic, goes back to the 14th century. This is what is still, this is the second, the first or second most popular Islamic anti-Christian polemic today, still today. The prayer of the Nazarenes, the Christians, ridicules God. The Christians chose a way of prayer during which the most devoted would consider it no great matter if he happens to have cast urine dripping on his thighs and legs. This is in church. He would take the direction of the east, make the sign of the cross, blah, blah, blah. Then it says, then he would be, this is sitting in church, he would open a conversation with whomever happens to be sitting beside him, and most probably the chat would be about mundane matters like the price of wine or pork, who won in gambling, what dish he prepared at home, and the like. He would interrupt his prayer to talk about similar things, and then the Christian would urinate in his seat if he can. I'll continue with this final section here. They speak of Jesus, right? He descended from the authority of his greatness and throne. We're supposed to believe that Jesus then entered the vagina of a woman who eats, drinks, urinates, evacuates her bowels and menstruates. Then he got attached to the inside of her abdomen and dwelt there for nine months, wobbling between excrement, urine, and menstrual blood. If you've been reading YouTube comments, you'll notice Muslims still use these polemics. Exactly. Today. This is exactly. the origin. Exactly. And they're insulting Jesus. They're insulting Christians. But if we say a bad word about Muhammad, who we know was a warlord and a violent man, it's death for us. But they can say these things with impunity. Absolutely. I'll stop here. Thank you. Buddy. Well, thank you, brother. I appreciate you. Uh, and thank you, everyone, for watching. Uh, hope to see you again next time. God bless. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel, Sierra International, and click on the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we publish a new video or go live. I would also like to appeal to you to consider becoming a Patreon patron by clicking the link right below. By doing so, you can give towards the production of these videos. There are also other options for you where you can give to our channel. I thank you from the bottom of my heart.